All right. Oh, this is Lawrence swimming again. The wind is blowing. You can feel the change of seasons in the air, the fall. And along with leaves, walnuts. I bet you thought walnuts come in those brown shells. Well, you get to those eventually, but you got to get the peeling off. If they were in those brown shells, there'd be nothing left to them. The insects and the birds would have them all eaten up, but they're well protected. Yeah, look at the, the cloud covering. Tomorrow they say it's a 100% chance of rain. It's a little bit of a chance today. There's rain out there, I can see it on the radar, but there's nothing right here immediately. The seasons are changing. We're told to watch the seasons. Before the Feast of Trumpets, we have fall on September 22nd. That makes it even more of a watch, huh? And it will be five years from the Revelation 12 sign. So we've got to watch. It doesn't leave you a whole lot of time, if that's what it is, to get your affairs in order. If you've got family members that aren't going to make it, get them ready. We don't know how bad it's going to get before they decide to make up their mind. You've been teaching them. They will eventually remember everything you've taught them. But how far are they going to go? What's coming is going to come fast. The seals and the trumpets are going to be on top of each other. And there's not going to be any let up. God's not going to hit us with one thing and then go sit back and let us regroup. That's not how you win a battle. The battle is to win our souls. If he hasn't won them already, he's going to escalate things until you finally say, Okay, I give up. You're right. I can't do it without you. We're still here because there's souls to be saved. So God's not going to give up on them. And if that happens to be some of your family, just make sure you've planted good seeds. And like I said, leave tracks around. They're going to need food, so you're going to have to have food around for them. That's the prepping. You're not prepping for yourself. You're prepping for those that are left behind. Boy, look at this wind blowing the leaves on the ground. All you do is watch my hair. It's not neat and in order like I try to keep it. I can see my car now. I can also see the mower, so I won't take you with me the entire way. I just feel like talking lately instead of getting into the Word because I do my study every day and you should be doing your own. You're old enough to take care of yourself. You should be in your, in your Bible every day. God's going to have a message for you that may be different than mine. And you've got to be in the Word to do that, to hear it. All right. I'm going to wrap this here and I'm going to get inside and see if I can put a little bit of something together for you, but I'm not going to do a big full one like I normally do. See you in a the park is kind of empty today. There was a family in here earlier with a bunch of kids running around up at one of the pavilions. And then it started raining. It's been raining off and on. 
there's going to be rain probably all day tomorrow or into the night at least. So I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film out here, but I'm just enjoying the scenery. We've got to be on our, on our toes, paying attention to what's happening this year. I just saw a, a beaver over here. He stayed out for a little bit. I might throw some footage at the end. He went into the brush somewhere over here on the bank. I don't wish to annoy him. So I'll let him be, but nature is definitely out here doing its thing, despite what we tend to do to the countryside. Pray for the world. I think that's about all we can do now. We're getting down to something major happening here in the next two to three weeks. And there may be a series of major things. You know, one thing can kind of trigger another. I see one of our white ranger trucks out here watching everything. I had to go into town to Put a little bit of charge on my phone and my battery. There's literally been no sun today. It's hard to use a solar panel when there's no sun. I suppose I could have gotten a little bit of power anyway if I just went out in the, in the field. But I was uploading another video trying to get ahead of things here. Because it looks like it's going to be stormy for a while. I've done a couple of videos where I was in the tent and it was raining. And I'm trying to work around those. So I might end up getting ahead of things here. And something major might happen after I've already posted a video. Don't worry, I'll cut in. If I've still got signal, I'll find some place where I can do a live broadcast if necessary. But I think this month uh, it's going to be important that I do get back with you. Make sure that nobody's afraid of what's happening. I know that the Middle East is continuing to take steps in the wrong direction. If the calculations are right, before we can be raptured or close to it, there has to be a war in the Middle East. It doesn't have to last long. Israel's really good at not spending a lot of time at war. You know, we know the Six Day War. They're such good fighters and well defended that they can usually garner a surrender quickly. And I think we're going to have that again because God is going to always, you know, be supporting them. We have a uh, an earthquake coming up in, in the tribulation time frame. The greatest earthquake that's ever hit the earth, at least with mankind on it. one that the whole world will be aware of. There's a couple of earthquake channels that you can join and they give you earthquakes all around the world and there's something pretty much every day. There's at least a four something on the earth 
Typically there's five sixes, a lot of them, you know, along the ring of fire. And they're pretty much, uh, they can show you where they come out in point A, and then you jump around on the plate, and there's another earthquake over here of similar size. But we've never had one covering the whole Earth. It's going to be around the time of the sun darkening and the moon turning blood red. If there's a massive earthquake like that, it's going to devastate every major city in the world. And it's going to put a lot of smoke in the air, a lot of ash. And we've seen just where, you know, where there have been volcanoes erupt here and there. I think the volcanoes are going to erupt all around the world from it. And we've seen what one of them can do. One of them basically shuts the airspace down because you can't fly a, a jet through that. It sucks up all that ash and it just, it's like sandpaper. You go to sandblast something, you remove the paint. You can actually sandblast something down to nothing if you want to stay at it long enough. And that's what happens to jet engines when you try to fly them through it. So we're going to have to uh, warn the world that God's getting ready to get their attention. We'll be gone by then. If you're a post-rapture person, I mean a post-trib person for the rapture, yeah, then maybe you think you're going to be around. I need to point out all the things that are coming that you would have to be subjected to and survive. We know that a great number of people on the earth are going to die. This isn't something you would subject your bride to. This is for the world. This is to wake the world up. Grabbing the world by the shoulders and shaking it, saying, What are you doing? I'm here to help you. Why do you keep refusing help? What have you got to gain by refusing help from God? Satan's good at blinding people. And I'm glad that there's a time limit to how much he can do. And that at the very end he's locked up and we won't have to deal with him again. Remember, he is so good that after the earth sees, all the people of the earth see everything that's happening, we see him captured, locked up temporarily until after the millennium and then released again, and everybody turns to him again. Yeah, he's that good. That's why you don't want to deal with him directly. Nobody does. Leave him to God. Even Michael is put off dealing with him until he has to. But that's coming up. Keep an eye out. We've got to watch for the dragon prophecy. Are we going to see asteroids, meteors? What are we going to see when we see the third of his stars come down? I don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to be interesting. I think NASA just released a document that has, they're tracking, I think, 1,400 potential near-Earth asteroids. Ones are going to fly very close to the Earth, 1,400 of them. We have one that we are told is going to hit us in 2029, and we know about Wormwood, so we are going to see some action from the skies. Hopefully we're out of here. Okay, I'm going to do this like I've been doing the last two or three because of the crazy weather here, I can't really sit outside, and I don't want to sit in my tent when it's raining. I'm getting sprinkled on now, and I'm in the trees. I didn't put a tarp up on my tent behind me. Somebody commented about that. I don't need the tarp for the rain. 
What I put the tarp up for is to keep the sun off of me. Well, there's been no sun. The sun's been behind the clouds, plus I'm in a very good canopy to block the sun. The trees above. So I didn't put the tarp up. Plus, where I put the tent, I made up my mind I wasn't going to put the tarp up, so I put the tent in a convenient spot. If I had to use the tarp, I'd have probably put it over in this area here where I've got more trees around. You have to tie the tarp to something. It doesn't float. Uh, they do make poles you can put down on the corners, but you've still got to have two big trees that you can run the tarp across. And there's none close by. So tarps are great. If I had a really big one, and I can't, I, there's a big one in my storage unit some way, some place. I hate to go buy another one because I know I've got one. I've got to start going through and thinning out my storage unit. I don't need any of this stuff. But I've got a, I've got a bunch of personal items in there, photographs, things that I've had, that the family's had forever. I don't want to get rid of any of that. The furniture is no big deal. We're not going to need any of it. Uh, I don't even know that I need any of it at all, period. But I hate to get rid of it because there's some value in some of it. I could sell some of the furniture and live off of it. Or God could supply the money one way or the other. But I've got it. It's, for what I'm paying for storage fees for the month, it's not that much. I think about how much it costs to rent an apartment. The size of the storage unit is 10 by 30. If I was comparing it to an apartment, that would have to be about 800 a month. And I'm nowhere near that. But it is still money that goes out. I'd love to be able to get rid of most of what's in there. The hard part is, is there's no place to stay near it. I'd have to go up there during the day. I've had some invites for putting together a, a yard sale. But I can't store my stuff there. So if I, I, I'd have to basically take everything out of storage, take it to the yard sale. If I don't sell it at the end of the day, take it all the way back and put it back. It's not something that I've relish doing so it just stays where it's at. I pray that I get a solution to that soon. I'm not sure what that white truck is doing. It's interesting. I'm not going to wander up that way. When I drove into town it was raining pretty hard. I had to use the windshield wipers. Town is like five minutes from here, so it's not a big deal. It takes the longest just to get out of the park because you've got your speed limit of 20 miles an hour to get out of the park. I do have a bench here that I can sit at, but everything's wet. So for me to come out here and put my Bible down and try to read. And again, I can still I can still feel it sprinkling. A lot of it's hitting the canopy. And there's another front coming in here shortly. It doesn't bother me to be out here by myself. Some people would be afraid of this. I've done it enough. It's not a big deal. I know we don't have bears here. I guess they've seen bears here over the, over the years that this park has been here. And it has, it's not that new, actually. I mean, it's not that old, actually. It's been here for a few years. But I run into people here in the park, and I talk to them. And they say, well, when I was a kid, I used to run all over this land, because this was all open land. Owned by somebody, but probably. But one of the guys says he still, his family owns land. I guess this would be to the west of us. I hear some geese. 
Sounds like they're going to fly over. It's hard in this sound masking environment of the river. I think they turned. Oh yeah, I see a whole bunch of them. There's probably a hundred of them flying in and landing. There's a small little island, if you will, out there in that river. And a bunch of them just landed on it. I don't want to get that far from the from the tent in case it starts raining again. See this ground is all muddy. I've got a uh, mat inside the tent. When I go in there I can wipe my feet on it, but I still have to sweep it up. Periodically I sweep it up every other day and throw it outside the door back to where it belongs. My car hiding over there. All right, I'm just kind of sharing some of the outdoors with you because I really, God has already given me the messages for this week. And I'm trying to incorporate them into my daily walks, but I can't walk. If I get more than 100 yards from here, it starts raining on me again and I have to come back. So these are, fellas, I'm enjoying the outdoors here. It's a beautiful spot. I haven't seen a deer yet. And there's supposed to be deer all over the park, just like there was across the river, but there's more uh, tree areas that are embedded in here that they've got room to hide. Okay, I'm kind of rambling right now, so. We got stuff coming up. We've got something, uh, this weekend is 9-11 coming up, the anniversary. What are they going to do to us on that anniversary? There might be something coming on. It may even be to the point where our own administration may allow something to happen because we're getting close to the election and they want to be able to, to stop it, which they can with martial law. If we're attacked, we won't have an election, guaranteed. They will indefinitely postpone it and come up with different reasons. So I think we're, it's possible we're going to get attacked. Maybe around the anniversary of 9-11, maybe closer to the Feast of Trumpets. There may be something going on. They might simultaneously attack the Middle East and here. That's a good possibility. The same enemy hates both of us. So be on your toes. If you go out this week, make sure you've got your escape bag with you in your car. A little of extra food, some clothing if you need it, some basic things that you might need if you get stranded someplace. When this does finally start, communication may go down. So me putting these things up online, hopefully somebody will be able to see them. I'm going to keep making them the rest of the month, but I think that we've got potential for a communication breakdown. Starlink is still launching satellites in anticipation of being able to use them. EMP will take them out real quickly. So I don't think our enemy is worried about them too much. I see we're uh, a little bit more on the news front. Starlink and T-Mobile are combining forces. You will be able to use your phone initially to text using Starlink. So no matter where you're at, if there's a Starlink satellite over you, which is pretty much, uh, it will be 100% of the Earth, but 
they're still launching them. But when they get up there, if you're near one, you can text using your T-Mobile phone through the satellite. Now, the capability is there to do more than that, but that's the first step. So if you're out hiking in the middle of nowhere, if you're in the Denali wilderness or someplace, and you're lost or you're injured, you can text for help. It's too bad we're destroying this place. There's so much good here we could use, but God's going to recreate it for us, don't worry. He created all this. He can create it again. He created it for our pleasure, for us to enjoy. Get out and enjoy it. It may be a while before we get to to do it again. I don't know how we travel as glorified bodies. I guess we can go up and down anytime we want. And what do you do if you come down here and you're fishing and you catch a bunch of fish? You take them back up to heaven? One of the guys came through today and I was telling him, you know, you don't have to worry about me for quotas or anything because I don't hunt and fish anymore. He goes, I can't imagine a time when I won't want to hunt and fish. And I go, well, I'm a few years older than you, so when you get to my age, you've done everything enough times that you're, you don't want to put out that much effort. I can go to the local fish fry in town and not have to work for it. All right. It's unusual weather that we've had here where it's raining like this, so hopefully this is going to be over with here soon. It's cool. It's about 70 degrees. I think that is the coolest afternoon I've had in a long time. You've seen some of the pictures of the leaves falling. The seasons are changing. God told us to watch the seasons. So let's see if we've got a cloud-covered sky. There's plenty of room for us to hide up there. I'll see you in the clouds. God bless.